Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. As always, guys, please do like, share, and subscribe, and join us at Patreon if you are so inclined. Um, just want to keep this short and concise and to be used as a tool when awakening others to the reality of how we have been manipulated by the mainstream me media, both political, um, medical, and also in a religious manner. So the story of Noah's Ark, many of you probably are familiar with the fact that Noah's Ark is not the original story. It is a revision of earlier stories, including the story of Zeusudra and the flood, which again uh, is from the Sumerian tales, myths based on facts, Absolutely, uh, the world has seen many, many floods. And then it's seen massive total reset floods, which have left us uh, basically very few survivors across the planet and really restarting from scratch. The story of Zeusudra predates the biblical story by thousands of years. It really, really does. The oldest known copy of Genesis, now you can't even call it a copy of Genesis, is really just a small fragment containing nine or ten complete words and eight or nine parts of other words. That's nothing. Nothing. And that dates to about, they say, somewhere around maybe 150 B.C. When you look at the story of Zeusudra or Utnapishtim, which are both from the Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian traditions, these are fuller stories, much, much more detail. And they are also far more ancient. So we do have the Epic of Gilgamesh, which talks about giants that can literally wrestle and beat bulls and lions. Who kid you not? As that's supposed to be a lion. That's not supposed to be a house cat. Yes, the story of giants. If you are still thinking in biblical terms like Nephilim, you are still in the dark. You don't understand the bigger picture. Yes, these giants were amongst us, and yet there were many different giants amongst us. In fact, openly, there were many different species of extraterrestrials, as well as the inner earth beings who are still there, uh, who stay hidden from us most of the time. The Atrahasis epic, or if you want to go into the epic of Gilgamesh, better yet, read them both. Read them both. And you will find out a lot more detail that you're going to get from the Bible. Again, the Bible is giving you a much later version that is basically an abbreviated Reader's Digest version. The big difference here in both of these stories is that they're not talking about one God, it's a group of beings. And again, they send the flood to destroy human life and to redo it because humans have multiplied to such an extent that the story says they're too noisy and they're annoying. And it has nothing really to do with what we get in the Bible. And you see that you have one entity known as Enki, also known as Ea, who alerts the hero. The, you know, in the Epic of Gil Gilgamesh, we're given one name, and in the Atrahasis, the other name, Utnapishtim, or if we're talking about Zeusudra, we're basically talking about the same person. But this could also be looked at as, as denoting the fact that certain um, favorite beings, like pets, you know, teacher's pets, were alerted uh, to what was coming and that it was a created event that was going to reset all of humanity. So some do survive. Uh, you also, you know, have here, it's also known as the Eridu Genesis. Again, instead of getting the term Lord and God or Yahweh or El, you have the terms, well, <laughs> you have the terms Anunnaki, which has gotten to be something that people are aware of now in these times. And these beings are all Anunnaki and also uh, EGG, as these beings are spoken of by direct name, Enlil, Enki. And it's basically blamed on Enlil 
that it's his idea to send the flood down, and many of the gods are upset with this, uh, these beings, these extraterrestrials, because it is extraterrestrial. And also, I mean, we do see these stories repeated in other traditions all around the world. So, again, when you look to Noah, you're, you're not using the term that was originally using, used uh, as far as a name to one of the beings that is thought to be a survivor of this flood. It's, it's a much, much later rendition and a much briefer rendition as well as you'll find a lot of pieces are um, that are missing in the Bible are found in these stories and it's fascinating you know really to look at this because again we have cuneiform tablets that are from the 17th century BC that are giving us a much more uh, detailed version of this story why did they leave out all these details? Because, again, it was the creation of a monotheistic mindset and also taking away the common knowledge that these beings are nothing but extraterrestrials. And even when we go outside of the religious texts and myths, we'll find historians talk about this. Interestingly enough, Josephus, uh, who we will talk about on uh, upcoming videos, does talk about this story he also talks about the time when these gods left the planet and even talks about it in a kind of a forlorn way you know it's the end of an age the gods have left but they left certain beings in charge and that is the royalty that is again the monarchy and the royal families and and nothing has really really changed it's just that we don't see these giant beings ourselves with our own eyes anymore. We see their intermediaries. So it's the gods that decide to wipe out humanity. And when you look to the stories, you find out that the gods also send plagues and pestilence upon the earth. Wildfires. The gods decide to pit human against human and always have them at war because it just makes it easier to control humanity. So if you think in terms of Nephilim and Noah, you need to dig a little deeper because you're using the mainstream religious media's words and verbiage. This right here is the oldest complete Hebrew Bible, so to speak, the Old Testament. It's 1009 CE. So these, these Sumerian, Akkadian, Babylonian stories predate it by you know, over 2,000 years, 3,000 years, in fact. They're much, much older, and they're much more detailed. And when you look to the story of the, flo the flood, you, you, you get the same sort of echo, though, going on. You'll see that the gods, again, were hungry. <laughs> they regretted killing everybody. There's nobody to offer them sacrifices. Nobody to offer them burnt sacrifices. Barbecue. No more lamb roasting. You know, and, and they were hungry and they were angry. And they're like, why did you have to kill them all? Now we're hungry and we're not getting the best you know, food and fruit. And we're not getting the best that humanity can provide to us. In fact, when you look to uh, scholars that have studied the Torah, which is the first five bugs, bugs, books of Moses, um, you'll see that they'll even admit that the Bible stories are taken from them. And they'll admit to the fact that these are much older stories. So again, why uh, did they revise the story? It, it's just a matter of control. To take a new look at the Bible, uh, we're adding to this playlist. We have 56 videos there. I'm determined to get it up over 100 videos, deep diving into the reality of how the Bible is nothing but just taken from older sources, a retelling of different stories and myths. Yes, there is some truth in there, but if you really want the truth, you should go to the older stories and myths to find it because this is the revisionist history. This is the CNN, uh, religious uh, <laughs> mainstream media platform. This is the MSNBC. 
So I hope this opens up some eyes and maybe this will help you guys to share with those that are still fully under the indoctrination. There is a creator of this, uh, this reality, this universe, a very benevolent and loving being. And yes, there really is a, a Jesus based on a Yeshua who is a beautiful benevolent being and came here to expose the system. But the system turned it into a tale of original sin and blood sacrifice, as it always does. As always, guys, look forward to your comments. Source bless and namaste.